In this tutorial, we are going to be focusing on the spread players command. As you can see, the spread players command consists of two coordinates, your x and your z. The y is actually irrelevant, and I'll explain why in a moment. But then you need the distance that you want your entities to spread from each other, and then your maximum range, and then whether or not you want teams. Probably not, but if you know how to use teams, then please go ahead and set that to true and it will group teams together. And then finally, if you looked at my tutorial on the say command, you will know how to use the target selector. So what this command does, if you haven't guessed already, it just spreads entities around randomly, but it will stay true to the parameters that you set. Let's do an example. For this example, we are going to spread the entities around this command block that you see here. Now, for our first coordinate, we're going to need the x, as you can see in this number, and then the z, as you can see in this number here. Following those two numbers that you just put in, your x and your z, you will need the distance from each other each entity should be. In this case, we've put 10, so entities won't be within 10 blocks of each other. Then, my next number is 20. Now, this is how far away it can go from the command block. So it won't be more than 20 blocks away from the command block. Now I've written the word false, and that just means don't group teams together. If you put true, then it will group teams together. If you don't know how to use teams, don't worry, I'll cover it in another video. And then finally, you want to specify the entity that you actually want to spread. You can spread players, as seen in the command, but in this instance we are going to go at a type equals armor stand, which means it will only spread armor stands. If you don't know what I mean, then please check this link in the description or on the annotation on the screen. So, upon activation, the 16 armor stands you see in this video will be spread 10 blocks away from each other but within 20 blocks of the command block, and they won't be grouped in accordance to their teams. I've also attached a chain command block which is always active. Now, if you don't know what I'm doing here, then please see the tutorial that I put right here. And then I'm going to write in a complicated command, which is a new command we haven't seen yet. If you don't understand what I'm doing, don't worry. All it's doing is making the armor stands place a colored wall below them after they've been spread, just for visualization purposes. Now, I'm changing the color of the wall every time so you can see how the armor stands are spread randomly, but still within the parameters that you set in the command block. Let's increase the maximum range to a whopping 60 and change the color of the wall to white and then change that impulse command, the orange one, to a dark blue or purpley color so it will run 20 times per second as long as there's a redstone block on it. This way you can see the difference that the maximum range makes. One last thing to note is that when the spread players command is used, the entities will always be on the highest point of the X and Z coordinates. So it's going to pick the top block, always going to be on the surface. Another rule is that the players will never ever be spread onto blocks such as water or lava. So bear that in mind when using this command. So thank you everyone for watching this new style of how commands work. This was inspired by the Redstone Scientist! Yes, that's how he pronounces this name. You have to pronounce it like that, otherwise it's offensive. But, if you enjoy Command Block series, then I highly recommend you check out his series, Mastering Minecraft. So much effort has been put into that series, I highly recommend you go watch it. But that's all from me. Thank you very much everyone for watching. I will see you in the next one. Take care.